Hello and welcome back to the official YouTube channel of Anastasis Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ananya B. Chatterjee, your VARC mentor. So guys, we are at Bibliophile episode number nine and let's get started. So the article that we are covering today is don't believe what you hear. The MBA is more relevant than ever. It has been written by Patrick Mullane. So let's start with the article. The actual article, the link to the actual article would be shared to you in the description box below. If you want to read uh, from the actual source, you may go ahead and do that. All right, let's get started. The MBA is much maligned today. So what do you mean by the word maligned? Maligned is to speak against somebody or something in a spiteful manner, in a negative light. So the MBA is much maligned today. And the reasons are, it is too expensive, it is not relevant, it is out of sync with the new world. Apparently, it doesn't align with the new world. Sure, depending on what you want to do with your life, an MBA may not be the best option. Yet, the idea that it's generally not a useful graduate degree couldn't be farther from the truth. Now, in the first sentence itself, we see that the author has taken a general public notion about MBA being irrelevant, MBA being too expensive, MBA being out of sync with the new world or not aligned with modernity. And in the second sentence itself, he uses the word yet, which is showing contrast. So we can already anticipate that the author is going to disagree with this notion and possibly give us arguments in the favor of why MBA is still relevant. Why is it still important? Yet the idea that it's generally not a useful graduate degree couldn't be farther from the truth. The MBA is more relevant than ever. This, this, this is author's opinion. The MBA is more relevant than ever. Not just relevant, but necessary. The author goes one step ahead. He says that it is not just relevant, it is necessary. Why? Now the author is going to give us reasons. Why? For starters, to begin with, it's important to note that the world's and business's biggest problems are interdisciplinary. So what do you understand by interdisciplinary? It means that anything which is interdisciplinary involves more than two or two or two or more uh, scientific nuances, academic nuances, artistic nuances. So something that considers more than two or more than three uh, disciplines to come to a conclusion, right? No challenge fits into a single lane. Want to run an organization trying to stop and reverse climate change? You better understand the chemistry of carbon, economics, project management, government, and leadership principles. So see how interdisciplinary things can be. Want to start a company that makes medical devices? You will need to know something about biology, federal regulations, marketing, and venture capital. Want to help a large tech firm develop and execute an artificial intelligence strategy, knowledge in software development, ethics, strategy, and scaling. Scaling is when you are trying to make a small business replicate itself in a larger scheme of things. Scaling a product or service is critical. So the author has given us multiple examples to show how interdisciplinary the challenges are in today's world. Next para, you may argue that you don't learn about all these varied topics in an MBA program. That is an argument that we can give that we don't learn everything in MBA. That's true. You don't. The author agrees. This is an acceptance from the author. 
But MBA candidates come from exceptionally varied backgrounds. If you're getting a master's in physics, you and your classmates likely studied physics or a related discipline in your undergrad program. So not so in most MBA cohorts. What does it mean? So the author is making a clear distinction between other courses which are academic in nature and MBA. So cohort means a group of people with a similar agenda or a similar mindset. Cohort, right? So the author is giving an argument that if you are from a physics background, chances are all your classmates are from a science background. But if you are an MBA aspirant in an MBA batch, then chances are there is a varied mix of people. There is an eclectic blend of people in your class. For example, only 24% of the students in Harvard Business School's class of 2024 studied business in college, only 24%. 28% had engineering degrees, 14% studied physical sciences, 10% social sciences, 19% economics, and 5% arts and humanities. So you can see what an eclectic blend of people come together to do an MBA. And of course, I mean, if I extrapolate a little, going by my experience of MBA and MBA students, I believe that, you know, you learn a lot, not from, not only from the faculty members and the curriculum, you also learn a lot from your peer group, your batchmates. While Harvard Business School is more diverse than many, undergraduate business majors make up less than half a class on average across a large sample of MBA programs. Now, the author also asserts that this is the case with Harvard Business School, which has been taken as an example. But even if you are not in Harvard and in any other regular MBA program, chances are your batch will also be a mix of varied kind of undergrad people coming to do an MBA together. Getting an MBA after earning a bachelor's degree in a non-business discipline uniquely equips you to view problems differently and increases your chances of success. Now, this is important. So if you have a non-business undergrad followed by an MBA, according to the author, that increases your chances for success. And why is that? Because the reason is it uniquely equips you to view problems differently. You might bring to the table something that other people are not thinking about. Your perspective can be a value addition to the case study that is going on or the learning experience that is happening in the classroom. And that's not only true at an individual level. Since you'll be in a class with varied backgrounds, you will connect with people who might one day become business partners. You know, you get a cohort of people with varied backgrounds and that can actually change the way you look at business and help you build network for future purposes. That is also something the author is saying. Their understanding of different disciplines will help you and them. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic relationships are based on mutual benefits. You help me, I help you. Do more than you otherwise could. One plus one truly is greater than two in this scenario. You are from the science background, somebody else is from the history background, chances are you will come up with something new in your thinking of a case or a problem or a challenge or an issue. Even if you, you don't partner with classmates, you will have access to a network you can call on when you need expertise beyond your own. This is also important. You might have a niche. What do you mean by niche? Niche is a French word which means expertise. Now your expertise lies in scientific method, let's say. You have a science background, but you need some kind of historical perspective on the issue. So you can reach out to these people, you know, who are from uh, maybe history or other domains. Another thing that makes an MBA relevant, so this is the first thing, 
first argument given in support of MBA is the eclectic blend of people coming together to make the learning uh, experience more enriched. Now, the second reason, the second argument being put, being put forth by the author is many MBA students learn through the case method. I describe this case method as learning through storytelling. You take up a case, you analyze it, you know, you, you evaluate it, you examine it, and then you come to a conclusion. So it is more like on-the-job training. It's more like applied learning. Hmm? Students read about a real-world situation a leader faced, and then with the professor acting as a facilitator, facilitator is not a teacher. Facilitator is a catalyst to a discussion or a means to an end. Acting as a facilitator, discuss what they might do if dealt the same challenge, right? So you start developing your decision-making skills, your strategy-making skills, your conflict management, conflict resolution skills, creative thinking, innovative ways of uh, self-solving something, problem-solving also. Not only does the case method help aspiring leaders learn how to make decisions when there is ambiguity, ambiguity is confusion, right, and incomplete information, it helps them become stronger communicators who can act quickly and make persuasive arguments, which is something of a necessity in the business world today. You know, when you learn through the case method, you know how to deal with other people and their biases and you have incomplete information you have to take a decision quickly and then justify the decision with persuasive arguments so you learn these things in an mba course the challenges government and businesses face today need such thinkers and communicators unlike other programs the mba isn't just about knowledge so so far we know a couple of things already the first thing is the author says that we we in MBA programs we have a, we have an eclectic blend of people from various domains. Two, because there is a case method of studying, you get a hands-on experience, real-time experience on decision making and other nuances of uh, business acumen. And the third is that. Unlike other programs, MBA isn't about knowledge. It's about knowledge put into practice through leadership. MBA teaches you leadership. Or teaches you would be wrong. It kind of, kind of enhances your latent, possibly dormant leadership skills and channelizes it towards the end of um, business skills, let's say. That's important. The world needs people who not only identify problems, most of us are good at that, but take action to solve them through their work and the work of those they lead. The MBA has a unique position in the landscape of educational offerings when it comes to this focus on developing in its students, a way to think that helps them develop hypothesis. So the leadership part is important along with another thing said by the author, taking action to solve problems and help other people to take this similar action. So problem solving is something that you can expect from your MBA program, according to Mullen, the author. In the landscape of educational offerings, when it comes to this focus on developing in its students a way to think that helps them develop what? Hypothesis. Hmm, hypothesis is a conjectural, speculative scenario or a solution that you can come up with in the course of a discussion or introspection. Test those hypotheses. Do they stand the test of time? Are they plausible financially? Is it is it something that could be done against the limitations that you have? Test those hypotheses and then act based on what they have learned. It's hard to lead if you can't make convincing arguments about why the path forward is the right one. So persuasive skills. See, I'm just giving a word 
to the things that the author is saying and going on summarizing the passage bit by bit. Finally, speaking of leading, virtually all MBA programs aspire to help the students become better leaders. No other graduate degree program does that. That is a pretty emphatic statement made by the author. The author is clearly distinguishing between MBA and non-MBA programs focusing on the yardstick of the development of leadership skills. And for good reason. It's hard, but it's important. Developing leadership skills, becoming better leaders, and teaching people to be better leaders is hard, but it's important. The single scarcest, scarcest is? Most rare. Most rare. The single scarcest resource on the planet today is strong, competent leadership. I am inclined to agree with this, and it is true not, not just for the business sector. I believe that a similar predicament ails us in the field of medicine, in the field of politics, in the field of administration, in the field of climate change, yeah, and education. Infrastructural development, strong, competent leadership is something that is kind of missing in today's world. Imagine a world where all leaders throughout the ranks of corporations and non-profit had outstanding leadership skills. These people had outstanding leadership skills. So the author right now, if you look carefully, is giving a subtle hint. subtle hint as to the application of MBA in non-MBA sectors also, and like non-business sectors also, non-profits, right? As importantly, envision a world where our politicians had those skills, what I was saying away. After all, business is a training ground for many elected officials. In the 117th US Congress, business person is the second most cited prior profession after public servants. So the first most cited profession was public servant. And the second one was business person. The MBA does more than most graduate degree programs to help seed the world with leaders at a time when there are more, they are more essential than ever. In conclusion, the author says, humanity certainly needs people with advanced degrees in disciplines outside of, outside of business too. There is no doubt about that, but claiming the MBA is somehow outdated is just wrong. If the degree went away tomorrow, the world would be worse off. It's that important, right? So the author is going back to the first sentence that a lot of people feel that MBA has become irrelevant today. So to summarize the main idea of the passage, the author argues against the author argues against the MBA degree being irrelevant or too expensive or not attuned to the new world by means of giving examples and concepts of eclectic blend of the batch, the case method of pedagogy, the leadership skills MBA program helps uh, inculcate and enhance the problem solving attitude that comes with MBA program and the persuasive skills that are needed um, in order to uh, convincingly make people see your vision and work towards it. And the author actually ends up proving through his arguments that MBA is very, very relevant even today. And uh, it has its applications in other fields too, right? So that's the main idea, talking about the tone and the style. The tone is pretty um, persuasive and argumentative. The author is giving arguments in support of why MBA is important. And the author is trying to persuade people to go against the general notion of believing that MBA is not useful anymore. So I think this particular passage is relevant for everybody who is uh, planning to do an MBA. Uh, in future and enhance their resumes. Please go ahead and read the passage on your own once from the mother source. Uh, check the description box and that's about it. That's it for today's reading, guys. Thank you very much for joining in. I'm going to see you again in the next class.
be well and happy learning and happy reading till then. Bye-bye.